Kristen 40, K R I S T I N 40. Um, quick plug for uh, the cat of all cats who's been lurking in the background, Basil Buddha Cat. Right. Basil's show is on uh, Basil Buddha Cat on uh, Facebook. On Basil Buddha Cat, his show's there. So, and also on Kristen 40 on YouTube. Thanks for joining us, and I uh, will see you tomorrow at noon 30. Good night. Good night. Okay, well, that would take a second and All right. break away for a second, and then. Uh, All right, perfect. You're certainly welcome to join us in the discussion of the Supreme Court decisions. Sure. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. So, when you were in the military and you, um, people were getting arrested, what years was that for the. Um, uh, between 77 and 87. Wow, I didn't know I Yeah, I was even stationed in, uh, in Italy. Wow. Yeah, at that time, Italy was probably still fairly conservative because the, the church had a, right. different, had a different attitude than, thank God, that it does now right. with, with the new pope, the, the, the greatest pope ever, the pope of all popes, according to the cat of all yeah. cats. Right. Um, I'd say I, I knew a lot of gay people. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, to me, I, I don't care. You know, if if that's what you like, that's that's fine. Right. And yeah. Most of us knew it, but the higher officials. Yeah. You know, some of them knew about it, and you know, it, it wasn't. Basically, they, they didn't mind it as long as you didn't flaunt it. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I, you know. Interesting. But yeah, you don't want you don't want heterosexuals or homosexuals. You know. Flaunting, flaunting their sexuality. It's just not. It's not proper. It's. It's not. It's. It's both would be counterproductive to the to the business atmosphere, whether it's in a store or whether it's whether it's in the military. You know. I'm just shocked up did, until did, the eighties. I mean, I was thinking maybe in the fifties and sixties. Oh my God! Still going to eighties. You know. See, this is, <sighs> now, now Emily's Emily's a, um, a bicentennial baby. Right. Yeah. She was. She would have. She was scheduled. She was scheduled for uh, right. July Fourth, seventeen seventy six. Right. And uh, my birthday the, instead of June thirtieth. Yeah, so the, tomorrow. The, so, the, so the doctor. <laughs> so, so, so the doctor oh. had a date on the golf course for July Fourth. They wanted to go somewhere. So he said, "Look." <laughs> Guess what? We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> deliver we're gonna deliver Emily today rather than five days from now, four days from now. So there you go. That's how doctors can screw up your life. <laughs> well, you, get, you have a birthday like mine, April fourteenth. Lincoln, Lincoln was assassinated on oh, that day. Yeah. The Titanic sank that day. That's oh. right. And there was, I think the space shuttle blew up that day. Oh my god! It gosh. might have been. Yeah. You know, it was funny. This, the second one, the one coming back yeah. that, that burned up. Yeah. <laughs> I was born within one minute of, of the Titanic started sinking in 701. I was born in 702. Wow. Oh, huh? It's, it's like a, a, a twist on the old expression, what's in the name? What's in the date? Because, <laughs> you know, you get these, you, you get these um, they, they have these birthday cards that, that, like, for instance, my Allstate insurance agent yeah. sends both Kristen and I birthday cards on this date in ba 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 yeah. something ha- this happened on this date on your birthday in ba 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 yeah. something happened and you know and, and you know you you kind of hope you're going to get a card which has you know something nice. a little bit more <laughs> cheerful than 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 a, 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 a ship sinking in 1200 or 1400 or however many people dying or or the, the president of the United States being shot yeah. in the back of the head or uh-huh. all, all these all these horrific things but there was a film that came out with um, Colin Firth, and he played a, a homosexual man. Yeah. And it was who else was in it? Back to that, the movie reviews. Go ahead. But talking about that's why I thought that homosexuals were being jailed in like the fifties and sixties because that's when this movie. No, they just place. they just took him out and hanged him then. But it was they showed like a documentary footage of homosexual men they found in bars and yeah. taken off in the paddy wagon and and you know. Being hidden and putting their jackets over their faces. Yeah, you kind of like in the forties. Yes, like like if you were in the military in the forties. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you were automatically arrested. It was just yeah. Wow. Boom. And in the fifties, it, it was better. As time went on, it was it was better. But wow. you know, it, it the atmosphere. Huh. I mean, it didn't didn't improve. But I, I, I've known people yeah. back. World War Two, and they were gay. They said as soon as they found out, it was just they were stripped of any rank. They were they were thrown in prison. Yeah. They were dishonorably discharged, huh. and you had to go through life with a dishonorable discharge, thrown out. Yeah. Right. And uh, you know, in the fifties, it wasn't as bad, but they would still throw you out. They 
certain circumstances do they give you a dishonorable discharge up to like 60, like 60. Then, yeah. they, then they, they, people will claim, well, why am I getting a dishonorable discharge? It's right. just, uh, I haven't done anything wrong except um, prefer the same right. sex. You know? yeah. wow. well, Dr. King was right when he said that the arc of justice bends in the, the arc of history bends in the direction of justice. Right. But sometimes it's a very slow, very gradual bend in that direction. Sometimes it takes, um, I got the things I've seen in my lifetime, the 50s with the civil rights movement and into the 60s and, and, and now with the, um, with the, some, of the, some of the good things that are happening. And that's actually what we're here to talk about right. today. Um, we're talking about two s- recent uh, Supreme Court decisions, one about the Affordable Care Act mm. and one about um, gay marriage. Right. And uh, sex marriage, right. All right, continue. No, Co-host, I, go ahead. I mean, talking about, it's interesting how, um, you know, you were saying how, um, your name's Doug. Yeah. Yes, yes. Our, our Doug was saying how, that up until the 1980s in the military they were arresting arresting, we're people, arresting people and i and for being homosexual and mm-hmm. i thought that was something back in the 50s and the but i had no idea up until you know and this was in italy i, I believe you had said yes. but they were american it was american military american, right yes. i just had no idea it was up until the 80s you know for me that's so shocking but um you know when i think about too in the past like rock hudson i think you know he had this career in hollywood and all when you mention rock hudson all he's his legacy is being the actor that died of aids you know i mean yeah. just to think you had that whole career and all you're remembered as is the one yeah. homosexual actor and i just think that's so sad to have a, and he was quite the debonair yeah. gent which which you know ever at the time men who right. were gay had to pretend to not be gay. Right. Uh, I'm, I don't quote me on it, but I think Cary Grant also was gay. I think there are a lot mm. of well-known male and probably also female actors that um, right. that had to hide in the shadows of who they really were. Otherwise, they would have been as they did in the uh, in the fifties with the uh, with the right. Red Scare. That so many right. people were banned from the entertainment business because oh, because right. because of some vague association with the Communist Party. Right, exactly. Yeah, and, uh, McCarthyism. Yeah. Yeah. Eugene Being McCarthy. Being blackballed. Yeah. Yeah. Not Eugene McCarthy. Uh, Joe McCarthy. Yeah. McCarthy. Joe McCarthy. Senator Eugene McCarthy is the one that was a pretty good one. Yes. Yeah, Joe Senator. McCarthy, but bad. Believe it or not, back in like the 40s, it was actually easier to be gay because uh, that's what we were talking before. My grandfather was in the movies and there was a lot of gay people and, and the, the press knew about it Right. The industry knew about it, yeah. but it was something you don't talk about. They didn't. They didn't put it in the paper saying, "Right, oh, John Smith is gay." Right, that wasn't. That wasn't yeah. the attitude of the people back then. You know, it's like if you're gay, that that's fine. We not. We don't discuss this. Yeah. So it it, it wasn't the ideal thing, but it was better than back then because if they announced that, oh, this actor, Cary Grant, was gay. It would ruin his career. Yeah. So they all kept it quiet. Then in the fifties, things started shifting. You know, they, um, a lot more press came out. It was it wasn't as confident as it was in the forties. <laughs> they would put it in the magazines. Uh, even if they suspected you were gay, they put put it in the magazine. Yep. They put it on the radio, and that's when when queer started getting ruined because they were labeled. Even if they weren't homosexual, they yep. were labeled as, and they would ruin their careers. The, the press took a little different attitude back then. There was a lot more um, respect for people's uh, mm. people's people's private lives. For instance, Franklin Roosevelt. I was just going to say that nobody yeah. really knew. He had nobody knew that this that this man was <laughs> was was crippled and, yeah. and in very bad physical condition because the press had never respect. never was skulking yeah. around to take a picture of him in his wheelchair. They didn't they didn't uh, sensationalize the mm-hmm. fact that he was uh, disabled. Um, they kept that. It was as, more of like a respect for exactly. Them, it was you know? kept. It was a, it was a non-issue as it as mm-hmm. it should have been as it should be, even yeah. now. But um, but the, the the reporters kept. They stuck to the news rather than to the extraneous, sensationalized part of people's lives. Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, I'm all 
almost wondering if it's an American thing because I have an Italian friend and we were just talking about, you know, the differences between Italian men and American men and how, you know, we, we think if a man is into fashion or clothes, he's automatically gay. Like only gay men are into clothes or yeah. fashion. And how my friend's Italian now and he says Italian men love fashion. They like looking good. And he says, you know, if a here, if an Italian man comes to America, he said people think if you're into clothes that you're gay, you know? It's and an odd connection, It's I think. very, it's, it's, it's very strange. It's a total different attitude. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. like I said, I lived in Europe for 10 years. I traveled. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, in a lot of ways, there are cultures um, behind us 20, 30 years. Right. The technology, the culture. Mm. So it, it's, it's like living in a different period, but their attitude is so much more advanced. Like when I moved to Italy, I had a weekend off, and a friend wanted me to take me to a beach, and it happened to be a new beach. And right. I was like, oh, oh and, and, and <laughs> people over there just, like, hey, do what you like. Yeah. Oh, no, it's too you know, And I was like, you know, <laughs> not that we didn't have new beaches here, right. but, you know, I was like, I don't know if I was embarrassed or it was it was something that I wasn't used to and people right. were like, you know, if you want to go nude, go nude. Exactly. If you don't, you know, yeah. people don't don't care. Yeah. And so in one aspect, their, their attitudes are so much, even to this age, so much advanced to us. They accept gays. You want to be gay? Mm -hmm. Be gay. If you're black, you're black. <laughs> they don't, it's, 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 yeah. not, it's yeah. not an issue in their life that, oh, my neighbor is gay and I'm upset about it. Right. Or, or he's a different race. He lives next to me. They don't care. Right. You know, you do what you want. As, as long as you're happy, you don't hurt anybody else. They're happy with no, it. it's true. That's the key, and that's really the, that's <laughs> really true. that's really the way our constitution lays it out. Is that is that you know you can you can you have complete freedom of speech. Right. But your freedom of speech ends where the other guy's nose begins. Yeah. <laughs> you can throw a punch. Just don't hit anybody. No, it's then. True. Don't don't yeah. don't scream out anything and everything you want to. Just don't scream fire in a movie theater because mm. there's danger that's involved in that, and that that goes beyond the realm of the First Amendment free speech. You have to think about other people and their their feelings and how what you do affects them when you say something or do something. Well, you have to have some some control. I mean, self control. Yeah. Good. Yeah, self control you know. is a, it's, it's it's a powerful tool. Yes. When, but so it right goes ends. back to, you know, as long as you're happy, you don't hurt anybody. Right. Yeah. It's like, going, like I said, you go to a movie theater and it's crowded and you yell fire, somebody's going to get hurt. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's hurting somebody. Right. No, nowadays someone yells fire. Didn't someone shoot another guy in a movie theater because he was texting or his phone? I don't know. There was something in the news about something, some yeah. two guys got in a fight. As he was talking too loud on the something, you know, yeah. on his phone or I don't know. But now it's, um, yeah, it's just. I do think in Europe they're more definitely more open about things. Right. You know, if you and uh, you know, I've had roommates. I've lived in living situations where, um, yeah, I lived with a guy who was a cross dresser at night. He was mm. just kind of a man getting dressed up as a woman, and everyone in the apartment was like, "Hey, that's fine. That's cool." You know, yeah. it wasn't Once like he did it was tastefully. <laughs> 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 but I just think here yeah, we say we're so open, but we're not. You know, whereas other countries just don't care. You, I don't know. You know, it's how to, you know how to find out how open you are. You gotta if you live in Europe. Yeah. Right. You wouldn't believe how different we are yeah. than Europeans. We move so fast here. Yeah. When I looked at Italy, I, I kept getting complaints. They're like, slow down. <laughs> slow down. Exactly. You, you go Emily's, Emily's like, dual citizenship, yeah. Italian and American, so yeah, she's been exactly. there many times, and uh, so she's she's oh, quite quite the quite the authority on <laughs> on Italian culture and Italian uh, <laughs> way of ways of it takes, living. It takes about a year to really <laughs> adapt to the culture because I was. <laughs> I get in my car, I go fast here, and I'm like, yeah. slow down. It's drill. At noon, they have siesta, like in Spain. Yeah. Everything closes down. I, yeah. I run around, and it's like, <laughs> the store's closed. What's going on? <laughs> it's true. And as you live there long enough, yeah. you adapt to the culture. When I came back, everybody was like, you're moving real slow. You need to speed up. <laughs> it's true. But, <laughs> but you, you adapt to European culture. Yeah. You know, like, hey, if you're gay... Fine. Right. That's what makes you happy. If, if you if you yeah. want to do this, it's that's true. fine. 
So you, you, you <laughs> adapt to their culture, but then yeah. you come back, and now you find out, well, wait a minute. <laughs> I've been living X amount of years it's in Italy, true. for example. I don't mind gays. I have friends who are gay. Yeah. Now I'll come back, and they're like, oh, you know, he, this person's gay. You right. should be friends with him, or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then you re adapt back to, to your way. I think everybody should live in Europe for a while and just adapt to European. Yeah. And it will be all much better. Yeah. No, it's... It's, it's certainly uh, very much like, um, you know, I always encourage people, uh, I have clients that, you know, that, that, are, that speak uh, a, a different language, uh, whether it be uh, Spanish or Portuguese or, uh, or Thai or Vietnamese or whatever, because this is a great multicultural area, this Danbury area. Right. And I always... But somehow or other, we always get talk about social issues a little bit along the way because I'm absorbing, I'm picking up a little bit of their language. You know, I, I've become a little bit fluent in some other languages besides English. Mm. Well, not fluent. Uh, hablo un poquito de español. <laughs> but, uh, ¿cómo dice en italiano? Parlo un po, un, sí, parlo italiano un po. Un po. Un poquino. Un poquino, sí. okay. Okay. Poco. Okay. Poco. <laughs> but one of the things I always like to um, I always like to bring up the story that my second wife told me about how she um, the first thing that her parents did when they came to America is vowed that their children would never ever ever speak Czech mm. in America in the household. You know, you're American now. You leave the the language yeah. of your native country behind. And years later, decades later, they regretted that that mm. they didn't teach the kids. The language there was, the there was a very popular from. belief with a lot of cultures. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, parents, parents came from Italy, yeah. whatever country, and yeah. they, they would not speak mm -hmm. their language. And there were kids growing up, right? and they'd be Italian, and they don't understand. Yeah. You know, it's like, right. you know, they should be proud yeah. of their culture. What's but grandma, they, what, they, what, the, what the heck are grandma and grandpa saying? Right, I have right. no idea what they're no saying. Idea. And they cut the, they no. cut the culture off. Yeah. yeah. You know, they should be proud of where they came from. And yeah. I, I granted, they, you know, yeah, they wanted them to be American, which is fine. Yeah, right. But the ones that really turned out much better is the ones that that teach it. You know, parents, grandparents, the culture. Right. They spoke more. You know, multi languages. Yeah. And they knew about the culture, so you know they got the best of both worlds. The yeah. extended families, the uh, the grandparents having the connections to their grandparents, and and I always encourage people to um, make sure that you. Make sure your kids, whether they be little kids or whatever, make sure that they hold on to the language of, of the country that you came from or that your parents or your grandparents right. came from. Hold on to that because when you can speak more than one language and think in more than one culture, mm -hmm. you're smarter. You're a smarter person mm -hmm. for it. It, it just, it, it, you just see the world. As you say, when you live in another country for a period of time, you're having the opportunity to take what you find to be the best yeah. Of of all the cultures that you've been exposed to, right? And you know, sort of leave the rest behind. But you can know a lot of things and and uh, have that that em enormously important respect for other cultures. So certainly, the more countries that you visit, right, the more you're going to learn, and the more and the and the stronger, and I believe better person you are for it. Continue with your Italian story. No, I'm, I mean, having spent time in Italy, I was there for about eight years and teaching English, and um, and I have my dual citizenship now. But um, mm -hmm. and I I would like to one day go back there to live eventually one day. But I still maintain my relationships and for the language. And um, I think I having spent time there, you also learn a lot about yourself. You know, mm. like, oh, wow, that's how I'm doing. Okay. Wow, yeah. I didn't realize I was so puritanical. And then when they're, you know, like Doug was saying, they're so open about their sexuality. And then you watch TV and you see women half naked and you're like, oh, my God, I'm so embarrassed. But then they're, they're so open about it. Yeah. And, um, or, you know, uh, I don't know, it's just so different from growing up here. You know, yeah. um, what's... But you, you learn the best. <laughs> like, I've been almost around the world. There's a few countries right. I've been to. Yeah. but. You know, there's some great countries I would love to go back to. There's right. some places I never want to see again. Right. <laughs> but uh, the, the best part about that is you go to these countries and you you kind of mature much better if you go into these countries. It's not like you're limited to here in the United States. I, I know people that 
probably live in Connecticut, have never been more than 100 miles away from the house. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it, it's, it's like walking around with blinders, you know. Probably I, the case everywhere in the world. A lot of people don't stray far from, they where, don't stray. from, where, they're, from where they're born. Yeah, and they don't even require learning another language in schools, and yeah. I think that's really kind of not helping. Yeah, it's full young people. It's full you know? and it prevents them prevents them from uh, right. you know the the talk nowadays is oh my God you know China's taking over the world and we'll all be speaking Chinese. Right. Well, well, we'll never forget the English that we speak. Right. But what's wrong with learning to speak Chinese? Is there something wrong with that? I mean, it it, it I think it's a benefit. Yeah, learning about other cultures. I mean, you know, if they don't to be tolerant and to, you know, accepting that there are other cultures and languages. And instead of kind of thinking, oh, we're America, we're the center of the world and people should learn our language, you know, instead of us going to other languages and, and, and embracing them. It's a narrow approach, certainly, yeah. to life. But, um, but a lot, you say, as you say, a lot of people yeah. are kind of stuck in that, uh, that mindset. Right. And it's to their detriment, too. It's to their detriment. No. Well, it's like when I graduated high school, I went to college. In the first year, I was like, it was okay, and if I was bored, and I was like, you know, I'm in my 20s, I want to see the world. Yeah. So yeah. I, I told my parents, I said, you know, I want to move to Europe, and join the military w was away. And they thought, oh, he, he's crazy. He is. <laughs> exactly. yeah, I have an older brother for years yeah, talking he'll about... He'll be back in a week. Yeah. Uh -huh. you know, yeah. And I said, uh, you know, I joined, and I'm going to Europe. So I uh, wound up <laughs> going to Italy, but I, tra I was able to travel almost every place. Wow. And um, I think I, I matured a lot more than I would if it just stayed here. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted... I was young enough. I didn't have any com commitments. Mm -hmm. right. I wasn't married. didn't have kids. And yeah. I said... This is the perfect time. Let me go see the world. Okay? Exactly. I only live once. Right. I want to see as much as I can, mm -hmm. learn as much as I can. And the things I would have never known or, you know, for example, I, years ago I went down to Atlanta. and That's uh, another world. <laughs> it, it, it really is because I uh, was in the military. I went down there for a month and I went out to dinner first night. Mm -hmm. And people were coming up to me and they... Uh, Three or four guys came up to me and said, we don't, we don't like you here. I, didn't, I haven't said a word. I'm like, I'm looking out, are you talking to me? <laughs> well, you, you're from up north, right? Again? Well, yes, I'm from New York. <laughs> oh, well, we don't want your peop you kind of people down here. I said, well, what do you mean, what kind of people? <sighs> well, we know about the drugs and uh, prostitution and crime and this and that. And I said, you know, you know something? I, 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 I said, sit down for a second. Let me talk to you. <sighs> I said, "That's brave of you." Yeah, where, where this area is. Excellent. I believe it or not, I live in the country. I live next to a horse farm. Wow. I leave the keys in my car. I don't even know where the key to my front door is. I've lived there for 15 years. Wow. And they're like, "No, no, no." I said, "You know the problem is, you're watching movies and TV, mm -hmm. and they're showing about New York." Okay. Now I was in Macon, Georgia. I said, "You ever been to Atlanta?" They go, "Yeah." Well, they have crime up there, right? Yeah. Yep. I said, okay, so big cities have crime, and there's places in the country. New York's the same way. We're no different. Exactly. I said, I, I live 80 miles from New York City. It's quiet. Sure, we get some crime. Every place does. But it's nothing like you saying. I'm showing pictures of my house, and they couldn't believe it. And I said, don't believe everything you see on TV. Exactly. Just use, like, Atlanta, for example, for your uh, area. Yeah. Okay. This is quiet. This is... My area is more quiet than that. Wow. And they actually apologized to me. Yeah. They said, that was nice you know, of them. I said, have you ever been outside of Georgia? No. Wow. You need to go visit. Go, go someplace. Go on a vacation. Go to California. Go someplace. I know someplace. exactly what you're speaking of because I was teaching, in, uh, I was teaching school in, in Trenton, Florida, 30 miles west of Gainesville. Matter of fact, I was there the day you were born. Oh, okay. Um, June 30th, 1976. Just, just started. It started in, uh, in, in May. Wow. Um, I taught there for three and a half years. Thankfully, they uh, closed the schools down, the, the juvenile training schools. They closed that one down and gave me an opportunity to return home to Connecticut because out there in the country, now Gainesville is a pretty much a politan city. Uh -huh. But at that time, and it's still, I've been there in the last two years, and it's still pretty much the same. You take one step outside of Gainesville, and brother, you are in the country. Mm -hmm. You are out in uh, cracker land. 
And they, uh, and I'm telling you, the, the northern Floridian farmers yeah. and the southern Georgian farmers have an ar ar your argument about who's the real crackers, which of course evolves from whip cracking, cracking the whip in slave days. Right, right. But it's not, you're the real crackers. It's both of them claiming, no, we're the real crackers. The, uh, the northern Floridian farmers and the mm -hmm. southern Georgia farmers argue over, both want the, they both want the title of cracker. But, um, but people down there at the school where I taught, they had this, this vision of, of Connecticut being basically a, a suburb of New York City and wall-to-wall mm -hmm. -wall asphalt. I said, we've got more trees there on the, in the average mile, average acre or average square mile than you have here. Because it was all farmland, so all the trees right. had been cleared out. But um, they just had this, this oblique vision of, of what Connecticut was like. Same because, as you ran into, exactly the same as you ran into. movies and TV, they don't, right. they, they've never ventured out past right. a far past their area. So all, all they know is based on TV, newspapers, all, what they see. And, you know, I would, I've been down south, Florida many times, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Another example, I was in Georgia coming back. Uh, we pulled off the interstate to get something to eat. Pulled in a restaurant. Cracker Barrel. Shout out to Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Almost as bad. Two women looked at us, my wife and I, didn't say a word. Yeah. And they looked at us and said, they're from the north. They don't belong here. Wow. Just by looking at you? Just by looking. Not, not even saying a word. Wow. Wow. And people, people in the restaurant were like, like in a movie. They, they were quiet. They turned around yeah. looked at, stared at us like, hey, we're Americans too. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it was that... Problem. Right. The problem is that a lot of them don't consider themselves American. Their flag is not the American flag. Oh, their, the flag their flag is the Confederate, Confederate flag that they're still fighting the Civil War over. But with that, we're going to have to wrap it up. Oh. Um, we'll, get to, we'll get to the Affordable Care Act one of these shows. <laughs> That's another thing in the news. They want to take the Confederate flag down and and, and some of the, and, and kudos to three very important Republicans: Governor Nikki Haley of South Carolina, uh -huh. to um, Phil, Philip Gunn, uh, the Speaker of the House in Mississippi, and also Paul Thurmond, son of Mr. Racism himself, Strom <laughs> Thurmond. All three have called out for the Confederate flag to be removed from their state. It, sh it should have been done years and years. Should have. But at that progressive soup, yeah, David, Emily, Emily, hey, and Doug, Doug. Thank and you. Uh, have a blessed day. We'll see you next time. time. Bye. Bye. Thanks.